about to render a Blender tutorial. In this tutorial, I'll be showing you how to create these awesome looking silhouettes in Blender. So first to make a silhouette, we need to understand why it's happening and it's all in the lighting. So let's start off with the blank canvas. So let's just imagine everything is here, but it's black. So everything is pitch black dark. And since making a silhouette is all about the lighting, we need to first think of the perspective of the lighting. And since we're looking at it from the front view over here, and we can see that there's no light flashing onto the front of the subject no matter what we can now see we can now tell that the lighting has to be all coming from behind the actual subject itself and that's it that's literally it to make a silhouette we just need a really bright light coming from behind the subject and the reason it has to be bright is to create harsh lines it will define the shape of our subject and it, it needs to be bright enough to illuminate the floor and the back and the background of it as well let's actually remake the scene over here and i'll show you step by step on the tutorial but i won't be showing you how to make the floor fully because the whole tutorial is about creating the silhouette not the floor but i will show you how to make the moon because it's a really big part that's the main source of the light so we have blender open up here right now and let's just open up a new general scene and i'm just going to delete everything there is and i'm going to add a sphere so for the moon texture i actually started off with a image texture and i just made it into an emission shader so here's a quick trick we're gonna first um not change anything in the uv sphere you can move around and all but we do not want to lose this menu and we're gonna change these segments into 64 but and the rings into 32 and that just gives it a little more resolution to it so now we can just shade smooth right click shade smooth and we're gonna add a new shader and that will be a image shader so we're just gonna open up a image texture real quick and we're going to plug this into the color to get the base color right, obviously. And we're just going to open up the image texture, which I will put in the description below. So I'm just going to open up that real quick. Okay, so since we haven't changed much of the sphere's shape except for the resolution, you we wouldn't have to do all those crazy unwrapping. But I did put a link on how to unwrap a sphere properly, and I'll put that in the description in the link below, and you can check that out as well. So first we've gotten this, but it isn't really emitting any light. And we can easily do that by plugging the color output, not only into the base color, but also the emission output just over there. And if you just wait for a blender to load up the textures, you can see that it's emitting light. Obviously you can't see this right now properly, but if you just change the render, render engine to cycles, device GPU, if you have a GPU, you can go into the render view and see if it's emitting any light. And remember how we said we only need one source of light and not the whole scene to be illuminated? That's why we need to go into the world properties over here. And we're going to change the base color so I can actually do it over here. We, can we need to change the base color to pure black so we can actually get the whole lighting effect. Light. And obviously you can change the emission strength. I think I chose a value of around 5 because it really gave, it really looked nice. So I'm just going to go with 5. But if you go too high, such as 10, you're going to start losing the detail because the light parts are going to kind of crunch down the black areas and it's going to look really gross. So a 5 looks uh, like a good balance. Obviously, you can go lower or higher if you want. But remember to keep it a good balance because the brighter the light is, the harsher, the neater your lines are going to be for the silhouette. Okay, so we've gotten the lighting right. Okay, so what we're going to do now is we're going to just add a plane real quick just to get the floors right so first we're just gonna scale up the moon because you know we want it to look nice it's if it's tiny it's not gonna look that good we're gonna go into wireframe mode just so we can see where the plane ends and we're gonna move the moon until it's somewhere around there so it shouldn't be in the plane but it shouldn't all be too behind so we're just gonna go until it's touching and don't make it come out too much because it's Personally, I, I don't think it looks good, but if it looks good for you, you can go around. You can do that. So that looks pretty nice. So for the camera placement, I, we can go with the somewhere over here at that view. But first, we're going to add the subject itself. So then we can do the camera stuff to make it look good. So we're going to open up a FBX file. I'll actually put a link to the one I used in the description. And there we've got we've gotten our subject down. So right now it's facing the camera but we don't want it to because when i looked at this real coach just wait for it to load the face is really messed up 
I mean, you can see through it and you can see all oh, its tongue and all that. It looks really gross. So I know you can't really see it because it's going to be a silhouette, but still. It's going to rotate it around. And, and now you can see that it's creating these really jagged lines. And that's probably because it doesn't have enough faces. So we're going to choose the skin. So it's actual outfit. And we're just going to add a subdivision surface modifier. So I'm just going to add that real quick. And since this is a kind of pretty complicated shape, we're not going to go with a really high value because then it's going to take too long to render. And in some cases, it'll even crash your computer. So first, we're just going to go into the middle. So the Y axis view or the X axis, it doesn't matter which one you're on. And we're just going to kind of scroll out until we find a good position we like. So I feel like this looks pretty good. We might have to scale up the moon. So somewhere around that. And let's just bring this back. So just gonna move this on the y-axis for me. So remember, we want to make the moon look really large, and to make to give that to give it illusion of that. First, we can make it really large, like real life. But the thing is, it's gonna start clipping, and you're not gonna be able to see it. So we can obviously we can make the character smaller, or we can move it further away from the moon. In this case, I'm just gonna make it a little small, not too much. So something like that, something around that looks pretty good. Now we're just going to set the camera position. So somewhere around here. That looks nice. And then we can add a camera by clicking Shift A, camera, and then Control Alt Zero to get the camera into the position we're in right now. And then we can move it around until um, it fits. So usually when you do the Control Alt Zero method, it doesn't go it's not the it's not the most accurate at what we were looking at and that's because if we were looking at it from this view it sets the origin to our view and the origin is usually behind the camera meaning the camera's view will always be a little further away to what we were looking at so we're just going to move this on its local z axis so we put, we click g z twice and then we can just zoom out just slightly and obviously, um, it's we can't see the moon property, so we're just going to move this up, and we're going to rotate it. So we can first rotate it on the x-axis until it's kind of looking down. Mm, let's see. So just a slight amount, and then we're just going to move this back again, but in this case, we'll move it back on the y-axis. And that looks pretty good. So let's just go to the render view to see how that looks. And we can see that it's created a really good outline of the shape. And obviously, you can see the armature, so the bone. But if you actually render it out, you won't be able to see that. Okay, so for the skies now, using a HDRI looked nice. So we're just going to open up an environment texture. And for the HDRI, I will put it in the link in the description below. So if we just open that up... um. And that's how it looks with the um with the HDRI. So for the flooring now, you, you can create the rocks, but I'm not really going to show you how to because it's a long process. And like I said, this is about the silhouette. But that's it for today's tutorial, and I'll see you in the next one.